So ultrasound of the abdomen uh, uses a technology called ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound are sound waves, which are radiation free, uh, very quick, and using a wide spectrum of uh, pathologies and problems for patients. They're used for babies, uh, they're used in pregnant patients, children and adults. And its use in abdominal ultrasound is essentially trying to answer why does the patient have pain in the abdomen. Uh, so the ultrasound of the abdomen will help us locate and target these areas, specifically certain organs, which are common causes of pain in somebody's abdomen. Now, there's certain regions within the abdomen which will hurt, uh, which we'll discuss in a moment. But essentially, the ultrasound is very good at assessing individual organs, specifically uh, identifying the cause of the pain. So the reason for ordering ultrasound abdomen, uh, as I've mentioned, is for abdominal pain. But also it may be that someone is getting weight loss or they are getting symptoms which are not explained. It may be that they've turned yellow uh, or their, their urine has become very dark uh, and stools have become pale. So those sort of things will indicate to the doctor maybe perhaps there's something going on with the liver and the biliary tree, the, the bile ducts. And so the, those are the sort of main indications for abdominal ultrasound. Uh, the doctor will be specifically looking for certain organs and the organs that we, we look out for in uh, abdominal ultrasound are the liver. Now the ultrasound is very good at looking at the liver because not only will it show any masses and lumps in the liver, it will also show any blockage of the biliary tree, the bile ducts within the liver. It's also very good at looking at gallstones uh, within the gallbladder. In fact, one of the most common reasons I do ultrasounds of the abdomen is looking for gallstones. Gallstone pain typically appears at the right side of the abdomen, just so right on, uh, below the rib cage, but also more centrally, uh, the pain can feel as if it's going through the patient or is radiating around them. The other areas that we assess with ultrasound are the kidneys on both sides, so the left kidney and the right kidney. We also look at the spleen, which is sort of tucked underneath your left side of the rib cage, the pancreas, which is more central, uh, and the abdominal aorta, which runs in the middle of the abdomen. So these are major areas which you assess with ultrasound, and each of them can have uh, problems which can cause abdominal pain and, and, and symptoms uh, which may give patients not just pain, also it may be associated with cancer, it may be associated with a change in, in, in urine. Preparing for your abdominal ultrasound uh, is fairly straightforward. The most important thing uh, is that you have to be nil by mouth or fasted for about four to six hours before your procedure or your ultrasound. Now this means not eating anything, uh, not having any tea, coffee, chewing gum, or smoking uh, leading up to that fasting period. You can drink water uh, up to an hour, an hour and a half before the appointment. And if you are diabetic uh, and your blood sugar is not very well controlled or you suffer from low blood glucose, speak to your doctor before commencing uh, your fasting just to make sure that the fasting is safe for you. Uh, normally four to six hours is a fairly small period of time for people to not fast, uh, to not eat. Uh, and so it's important that you still discuss it if you think you may be affected. Now, the reason why we ask patients to not eat and drink for the uh, ultrasound are two reasons. A, one of the most common reasons for doing an abdominal ultrasound is to assess the gallbladder because that's a very, very common cause of pain because of gallbladder inflammation, gallstones, and pain is usually central or the right side of the abdomen. Or it can even be a little bit lower as well. And so when you don't eat, the gallbladder fills up, and then we can see the gallbladder much better, uh, and we can see the gallstones much better. If you eat food, the gallbladder squeezes and becomes very small, and therefore the radiologist will struggle finding the gallbladder because it's shrunk. And so if four to six hours are enough for it to fill up again for the next meal. The other reason we ask you not to eat and drink is because when you eat food, you, you introduce air within your bowel and your stomach, and air is very difficult for us to then look through when we're looking at your abdominal organs. So those are two very important reasons why we fast. The other preparation you need to do is uh, come up appropriately dressed so we can uh, access the abdomen uh, during the examination. In order to make it uh, comfortable for you, there will be a chaperone present during the examination as well. Uh, and once you've had the uh, scan done, 
you're good to go. There's nothing specific to do afterwards. In fact, you may want to bring a little snack with you because you've obviously been fasting for a little while. So you will be a little bit hungry, especially if you're diabetic and you think that your glucose is running low. So certainly bring something with you, a little snack. So as soon as you've had the ultrasound, you can quickly have that. Ultrasound the abdomen is actually very good for very specific things. Uh, and one of the most best ways of diagnosing gallstones uh, is ultrasound. Uh, even CT it may miss, for example. Oh, many people think that you know CT scan is a very sort of wholesome scan, which it is. A CT scan is an excellent scan. But actually for gallstones, uh, an ultrasound is usually better because you can see the gallstones much better uh, with ultrasound. Uh, and that being one of the commonest causes of abdominal pain in patients. And so uh, an ultrasound is actually an excellent way of looking at uh, gallstones. Also, a very good way is abdominal aorta. Uh, especially in the UK, we've got uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm screening, which is essentially abnormal dilatation of the abdominal aorta. Now, an abnormally enlarged abdominal aorta, a bit of a mouthful, uh, is actually a, quite a significant problem because if, it, if an abdominal aorta ruptures, it's a very high risk of death. And so for that reason, uh, the, we screen the population of, of which are high risk, and those patients who are certain uh, older patients uh, and, and who have certain risk factors also makes that more likely. So an ultrasound of the abdomen is very good at, uh, at diagnosing that. Uh, also problems with the kidneys, so especially if the kidneys are blocked because of a stone or some other reason where the, the urine flow from the kidneys into the, into the bladder is blocked. Again, ultrasound is excellent for that. Uh, any, any lumps and bumps and cancers in the kidneys are also very well picked up with ultrasound. The spleen, actually the spleen is actually a fairly uh, reasonable organ that doesn't go wrong very often. And, and an ultrasound if, is actually very good at picking up problems within the spleen you know, any lumps within the spleen, uh, which may be present. The liver also is actually a very common reason why we do the ultrasound. Patients who've got liver problems, which we follow up uh, very well with ultrasound. Uh, because patients who've got liver cirrhosis, who've got liver uh, because of alcohol or other reasons, the liver has been damaged. Uh, and that liver is more likely to develop cancers. Uh, and so we can follow that liver up and see how it's doing with ultrasound. The beauty of ultrasound is that it's radiation free. Unlike CT, X-ray, uh, it takes a, uh, there's radiation involved. Ultrasound does not have any radiation. It's relatively quick. You come in and the amazing thing is you get instant feedback. So when we are scanning you, we are talking to you. Uh, we see the screen, we have a chat with you. And if when we have an idea of what's going on, then often we may be able to tell you there and then. Sometimes we don't, aren't 100% sure. Uh, and then we'll have to discuss this with your doctor or your team and we may need to do for the test. But the good thing is you can chat with us while things are going on. And that's what the beauty of ultrasound is, it's interactive. So once you've had your ultrasound scan, uh, the radiologist uh, will, make a formal report. Often they'll give you an idea of what they've seen at the time of the scan. Uh, I normally do that with my patients. If I've seen anything, I will explain to them the actual findings verbally uh, where possible. If something I'm not sure about, I will say that I'm not sure what's going on either. So because sometimes we don't always have the answer and ultrasound is often good at ruling things out. And so I'll, ha I'll have a discussion with my patient and explain what I've seen. And then I'll say that I'll give them a formal report, which is a kind of a formal report which is in a physical format uh, which, they'll, which they'll receive. They'll also receive the images of the ultrasound uh, for their own records and but this is the report that's important which is what they will be using uh, for any further treatment and management. That's what the ongoing treatment will be based on. So for example if we see gallstones and they wish to see a gallbladder surgeon then the gallbladder surgeon will be interested in the report uh, and, and they will see the report and then they'll act according to that.